Good afternoon, everybody, uh, members, officers, and any members of the public who are viewing the live stream of this meeting. Welcome to this meeting of the Grants Advisory Committee. All members who are members of the committee are in the room, whilst the majority of officers that's not strictly true, actually, because there's Peter MacDonald who's on um, virtual line, but there are a quarate number of members who are on this committee in this room, uh, whilst the majority of the officers will be joining us remotely. This meeting is being live streamed out to the public, so anyone present giving their present gifts their consent to be recorded. Please can those present use make note of the guidelines in the room. My name's Councillor Sue Ellington and I'm the Vice Chair of the Grants Advisory Committee. For the information of members of the public, the role of our committee is to consider and make recommendations to the lead cabinet member for finance, Councillor John Williams, who is um, virtually with, it, with us um, on we make recommendations on applications made under the council's grant scheme. Councillor Williams then makes his decision taking account of our recommendations. So if we can begin the meeting with apologies. Apologies for absence please Aaron. Thank you, Chair. We have apologies for absence from councillors Joe Sales and Peter MacDonald. Although Peter is obviously with us <laughs> virtually, he uh, gives his apologies sort of by proxy in that he can't vote in the meeting. Thank you. I can confirm that the meeting is quorate. Um, can I ask uh, the members of the committee to identify themselves? Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, yes, I'm Councillor Claire Daunton, and I'm one of the members for the Fenditon and Fulbourne Ward. And I'm Councillor Bill Handley, one of the members for the villages of Over and Willingham. Thank you. May I ask any officers in the meeting to unmute themselves and introduce themselves? I believe we have Catherine Hawkes. Yes, thank you very much. Catherine Hawkes, I'm the Communities Manager here at South Cams. Um, sorry, I'm just... Uh, Cecilia Murphy-Rhodes. Yes, thank you. Cecilia Murphy-Rhodes, Development Officer and uh, presenting the Community Trust Grants. Uh, Leslie McFarlane. Hello, yeah, Leslie McFarlane, Development Officer um, for Health and Wellbeing. Thank you. Um, Peter uh, MacDonald, Councillor Peter MacDonald, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, hello. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Councillor MacDonald, uh, representing uh, Duxford Ward. And Councillor John Williams, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, hello there. Uh, good afternoon. I'm uh, John Williams. I'm one of the members for Fendin and Fulbourn Ward, I also the lead member for finance. Thank you. Uh, right, so can we do declarations of interest? Uh, do any members have interests to declare in relation to any item of business on this agenda? If an interest subsequently becomes apparent later in the meeting, um, you could raise it, but it would be better if we have pre-warning. Good. We'll move on to item three. Um, we have the minutes uh, which uh, were circulated uh, over a week ago of the 26th of November. Can I go through them page by page and make sure that you think they are a true record? Page one. Page two, page three, and that's as far as we go. Everybody happy with those? Right. Um, 
I will sign them later. Number four, community chest funding applications. I, members, I would like to explain how I propose to manage this item. Firstly, I will call upon Cecilia Murphy Rhodes to introduce the report. We will then take each application in turn, and I will call upon Cecilia to provide an overview of the application, and then I will invite each member to indicate, and, and we'll have our discussion, um, and we'll see whether there's a clear consensus. So, Celia, would you, Cecilia, would yes, you like to introduce, please? Thank you very much, uh, Chair. So, yes, we have the report opening, which will be explaining that we have the community chess grants, obviously, of the total of £58,140, and we've got the um, ring-fenced amount of £10,000 for the biodiversity grant, um, and also the 50,000 ring fence for the community-led plans in the uh, current pot. And you can see in uh, point eight, we have that summarized in a table. And with um, today's current applications coming in for this month, we only will have one of those. It's going to be a quiet month comparatively. Um, and that is in Appendix A, which brings us to a total applied for this month of 401 pounds and 91 pence from the community chest pot. Um, I can now go through uh, Appendix A, if that's okay. Yes, please. Uh, yep. So this uh, application, which is CHPHFLJK, its reference number is from the First Sawston Boys and Girls Brigade. They're a community group based in Sawston. Um, and the application is for basketball hoops to be fitted into their church hall. And they have put forward for their full amount of £401.91. Um, this application is supported by their district councillor, Councillor Milnes. Uh, they have also, uh, since we last spoke, sought to, uh, support from their parish council. Haven't had confirmation of that as yet. However, um, pre previously, the parish council has supported them with uh, financial support of £200, um, which wasn't in the paperwork that went through to yourself. So apologies, it's a, a supplementary piece of information that's come through since it was applied, uh, supplied to yourselves. Um, just that the the applicants have confirmed that the parish council awarded the £200 in the previous spring um, to cover the annual fees, um, which has allowed them to continue functioning as part of the national organisation and covering their training costs and so forth. Um, this was due to uh, their member subscription, which had been waived due to the not meeting in person from COVID restrictions. Um, and they haven't applied for any other funding sources because um, this is the total amount that they're applying for. Um, and then the uh, final fitting of the uh, uh, basketball hoops will be done by volunteers. So there not, are no actual um, labour costs associated with this particular application. And that is the total summary of uh, Appendix A. Thank you. Members? Um, can I just make a comment, Chair? Um, yes, please do. Um, so in the paperwork that we have, um, it, I think that um, Cecilia said that uh, Councillor Mills uh, supports this. That's correct, isn't it? It's just that in the paperwork we have it, that doesn't reflect that. Yes, yeah. apologies. That was another supplementary piece that came through in the interim because it was slightly early uh, supplement. Okay, I just want, I wanted to check that I just heard that. But this hasn't been any response from the Parish Council yet. Is that correct? Not, Not as yet. yet. They said that they would be seek the Solston Group was seeking it from Parish Council, but they haven't had final confirmation yet, no. Okay, thanks. No, the questions I had were the ones that um, Councillor Daunton has raised. I don't have any great problems with this one. I think you need to have your mic a bit closer. I was just saying that uh, uh, Councillor Daunton's asked the questions that I was going to ask, and um, I don't see any great problems with this um, submission at all. Thank you. Uh, Peter MacDonald, any comments? 
Um, not from me, Chair. Uh, it looks uh, all in order and looks like a good project. Fine. So, are we happy to proceed with this one? I get, I've just got. I have just got one question, though. Um, do we know? I mean, obviously, it, it's good that the the Boys and Girls Brigade will use these hoops. Do we know uh, which other groups will actually use them? It, there's a list here on the second page of the application. Um, yes, yeah. I, I don't have the specifics, um, Councillor Daunton, as to which groups, only that it is youth groups from those um, subsequent uh, seven parishes. But I could explore that if that's something you wanted me to find out. No, I, I just wanted to check that we, I mean, it's fine that they're asking for them. I just wanted to check how widely used, maybe Councillor McDonald knows how widely used the, um, this particular venue is. Um, uh, only anecdotally that, that um, I know from my ward, uh, both Duxford, Duxford and Babraham uh, groups are using it, so th that's as much as I know. It is a relatively small amount and, and they are doing quite a bit of help helping themselves. I feel um, that everybody seems happy about that. Yep. So, Erin... We are agreed. Thank you. We will move on to uh, the next item five, children and young people's grant. I feel this may be a little bit more complicated. Would you like me to uh, proceed, Councillor Ellington? Yes, please. <laughs> okay, so um, this is the Children and Young People's Grant. Um, this budget became available as a result of um, unspent money from the expansion of the Mobile Warden Scheme. And it was decided by Grants Advisory Committee members in a workshop over the summer that the money should uh, go towards supporting the well-being of children and young people um, in recognition of the ongoing impacts of COVID-19. Um, so, um, we've received 16 applications um, from a range of community organisations, um, uh, which received a total of £92,944.33, about £38,000 budget. Two of these applicants uh, were received from Scouts groups, both at North Stone Trumpington, and they were requesting capital funding um, which we would recommend uh, should be sought from community chess. So we've sort of removed those two applications from this pot. So that takes the, the, the amount sought down to about 82,920. So we've still got quite um, some tough decisions to make. Um, we met as an officer panel to review each of the applications um, using a weighted scoring system, which has been used for the um, zero carbon um, community grants. Um, so I think it'll be something that you're familiar with. And the uh, officer panel scoring can be found in App Appendix A. Um, one other thing that I'd like to note as well is that some of the funds that were applied for included small amounts of capital funding there isn't a lot um, but again if we wanted to sort of try and make this um, sort of budget go a little bit further we could direct the capital funds to to be sought from the community chest um, budget um, so that we're only seeking revenue funding for some of these applications um, and in conversation with some of the schemes as well we could proceed um, with, with, with distributing smaller amounts of funding, it would still enable some of these projects to proceed, but just on a smaller scale. But, I mean, we can go through that um, application by application. Um, so, I, I guess the best way to start is if we, if we were to turn to Appendix A. Um, and as you can see, we've got the officer panel scores here. So if we were to um, allocate the full amount of funding for the first one, two, three, six uh, applications, then um, 
and, and these were the applications that scored the highest uh, in terms of meeting our objectives and aims of the, of the funding. Um, yes, Peter. Um, this is just a suggestion on process and, yeah. and the way to approach. First of all, um, I don't want to second guess the officer scores because I'm sure you, you really went through these very thoroughly. So in terms of process, I don't want to really look at that that column in terms of, you know, should it be 82 rather than 84 or anything else. So from my point of view as a committee member, I'm looking at the amount applied for column and it just occurs to me and and um, please guide me, you know, because I may be jumping to conclusions here that because we've got for Orchard Park, Let's Cook and Unique Feet quite large amounts of eight thousand pounds that it just when I when I first read the papers uh, when I got them from Aaron it just occurred to me that if we gave those three slightly less so, so in other words still made an award but gave those three slightly less we maybe could afford to do the next um, you know at least part of the next three on the list not uh, not completely fund them because they're five thousand pounds each so I just like some that's just a suggestion and some overall comments. Um, so with regards to the Orchard Park project, um, that's a two phase project. Um, the first phase is where the majority of the costs will come from. Um, so it's, fi it's 5,950 towards phase one, and that's where they'll be engaging with youths. And then the, the remaining 2,000 would be spent on a project or activities designed by the young people. So that hasn't been specified yet. So it could be uh, that we fund phase one um, and uh, we could direct them. I'm just looking, they do have match funding already uh, from Romsey Mill, um, but there isn't any match funding, let's say, from the parish council. I don't know whether they we we could direct them to the parish ca council to um, help fund phase two, but that that would be a suggestion. Um, let me just look at the other. Bill, can, can, sorry, um, Leslie, can I just? Interject. I mean, another question was that all or part of this could perhaps be requested from the CSP. Am I am I correct? Is that something that we could do, Catherine? The um, yes, there is OPCC funding being made available. Um, I think from January for um, a community fund that could be applied to, but it would need to be applied to by the CSP on behalf of a group to um, to undertake a project. So we could apply for some or all of this from that fund, um, but not obviously guarantee that it then happens because the decision wouldn't be ours. Hmm. It, it seems to me that it, I, I personally would like just to go through each of the, the first six applications because I feel we do need to have an understanding of what is being proposed and some of these, okay, the scoring has been done, but some of these are for relatively long-term uh, projects, whereas others are for very much shorter projects. And I feel the amount of money that's involved, I would like to feel, and, and maybe uh, you can tell me, that it's about how much, how much money is being allocated per person, if you like, you, that's being cared for. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm sure that's been built into the scoring, but it just... Yes, it has. 
I just wonder whether Leslie wanted to take you through what's actually part of that scoring, just to give you the headline information on what the scoring comprises of, because value for money is one of those things. Yes. Um, can you do that very briefly, please? I can. So um, we had we we had uh, five. There are five kind of headings or four aims, let's say. Um, which uh, attributed to 70% of the score. Um, and then we looked at sort of value for money as the final 30%. Um, so for instance, with the Orchard Park score, um, sorry, I have to, I've got so many pages open at the moment. Um, If you go down to Appendix C, which is on page 35, the Orchard Park, so you could, well, it, it, I've given the three individual officer scores, but they it, it comes out of scoring quite highly on additional value or, or value for money. And we gave it a score of eight, nine and nine out of 10. Um, and other than the Romsey Mill, I think those two got the highest scores for value for money, if that helps. Yes, I did note that. I, it does seem to me that some of these uh, amounts are, are quite uh, large, and um, so there's an element in me that wants to say uh, that we should be comparative in the amount of money we give to each mm, fund. Mm. Claire, yeah, um, I, I would just like to ask her for a little more information on the Orchard Park. Um, it, it says, this is a strong application which addresses a particular issue within a given locality and clearly meets all the aims and objectives of the funding. So, um, what exactly is the project? Um, so, uh, there are sort of relatively uh, high levels of um, antisocial behaviour in Orchard Park at the moment. Yes. Um, and it's being, uh, the, the, the perpetrators, let's say, are young, tend to be young children, sort of aged um, 11 to 13. And they're doing things like sort of kicking in community doors, smashing windows. It's that kind of low level uh, boredom type crime. Um, and um, they feel, that, and it's as a result, I guess, of, of, of lack of um, amenities or opportunities for young children to engage in, in more positive um, uh, behavior outside of school. Um, so this is, um, again, I think Romsey Mill will be um, recruited, uh, they, that they will um, employ some youth workers to work with these young children to, um, I think it's about positive engagement in um, how they want to shape the community in which they live in. Um, and from that would come phase two. So once they have a series of engagement uh, with specialist youth workers, uh, these young people will be able to determine what kind of uh, positive uh, activities they would like to see in their community. Um, is there anything that you wanted to add to that, Catherine? And, and so the £8,000 is to pay the, the youth workers? It's it's a combination of um, yes, it's youth worker um, and it's um, uh, community hall, like a hall hire, venue hire. Sorry, I couldn't think of the word. Uh, venue hire and um, let me just look. On, I've, I've listed it on another table. Uh, Orchard Park. Sorry. It's effectively detached youth work, so it's not about setting up a youth club, it's about working with young people in a detached way to 
meet them in the location where they find themselves and help them help help understand their life situation and what they're going through and why they have reached the point that they've reached where they're getting involved in these antisocial behaviours. Um, as Leslie says, it has been quite bad in Orchard Park, so um, partners have come together to bring a, um, uh, a sort of a community support partnership together to try and address some of the issues, and it's come through that group that the, it's through that group that this application's come. And, and the aims and objectives of this of this fund, it's all about building sort of uh, social value um, and personal resilience or individual resilience. Um, and it really, and because it was such a, a specific project, tackling a specific problem, it just um, involving the work of the parish council and other youth groups in the area, there, it demonstrated a community coming together to tackle a problem. Uh, and that's, I think that's why we found it such a strong ap application. Mm -hmm. I mean, it has come up at CSP, the issues in um, Orchard Park. I mean, in terms of the original um, reason for setting up this fund, which was COVID related, does it fit with those aims as well? Well, it was, it was, yes, it, I mean, it's about mental health and well-being. Um, so it's not just COVID related. Um, we, we had two applications relating to ASB type uh, issues, um, two applications relating to sort of diet and, and well-being, and the remainder were all he uh, mental health type applications. So we didn't uh, we didn't uh, specify that it needed to be just um, mental health type um, applications, but uh, applications that addressed uh, young people's well-being in general. Okay, thanks. Can you assure me that we can find youth workers in the current shortage of finding appropriate carers and so on to do this sort of work? I believe that the um, Sawston, uh, sorry, Orchard Park um, Parish Council or Orchard Park Council um, have liaised with Romsey Mill um, in order to put this application together. So I, I do believe they have the support of Romsey Mill um, who will be putting forward some of their youth workers. Uh, Councillor John William, you've got your hand up. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, one, one of the things I, I was looking for um, and in some of the reports um, you've, you've, you've given us an indication, Leslie, of how many, um, and this goes back to Sue's point, you know, how many um, um, people this will, young people this will um, um, reach. What I haven't got with Orchard Park is a feel for how many young people are actually involved, will be involved with this project. There's no no figure on that. Um, and whereas some of the other um, bids are about empowering people to go out and and improve things in the in the district or in the locality. Uh, take for example the food the food one where you know training 20 volunteers um, to deliver cookery workshops for example so we've got some idea of the reach of of these schemes uh, Orchard Park we don't have any of I, I don't have a feel you know are we are we are there a, is it a, a handful of, of um, young people who are causing these problems is it one that's causing these problems is it dozens who are causing these problems i don't get any sense of the size of the problem um and i i, I did wonder why we had scored it so highly to be honest with you leslie compared with some of these other schemes Again, I think sorry, that's um, that's that's that's. So I, I do have a, a, a you know an issue with Orchard Park Community Council in in as far as 
their application. Obviously, we're only seeing a summary in these reports. But I, I feel that there are other um, projects that actually would appear to be doing more using their money more in, in a in a um, in a more va you know cost value for money way than orchard park which you know which is for very good reasons they want to reduce the antisocial behavior on their and in their area but um it seems i get no i've got no idea of the scale of the of, of the of the issue there and, and actually how many young people this is going to reach because you know in terms of money you know it is you know eight and a half thousand pounds um if it's only a couple of kids that are causing problems in that estate that's an awful lot of money to be spending on a couple of kids i'm just looking at their application to get a, a feel um see if i can I've I've just had that, I've just flicked through it, and while I can't give you a number of, I understand through the CSP that it is dozens of young people, it's not just one or two, um, but it does break out what they will do with it, and they will be running 20 detached youth work sessions, 24 engagement sessions, and their idea is that the young people will then be involved in a project that will support the local community to be determined by them, which is what the phase two of the project would be. Um, in okay, thanks, to, Kathy. Yeah, that, that, take... that puts it into context. That's that's uh, I, that's much better than. Sorry, the summary. As I say, I, I had okay. trouble with the summary in that there was very little there to to understand what what the issue is and and how they were going to approach it. So that's thank you for that. Thank, thanks. Um, uh, I, I think I would look at this in a, in a slightly different way and, and say. The actions of this group of young people um, kicking in doors and so on is actually affecting a lot of people in the community. It may not be affect, it may only be half a dozen people who are the main sort of offenders, but it, their actions are affecting a lot of people and perhaps reducing the enjoyment of the residents of that parish. So I would look at it that way. What what concerns me probably more is that you know are we you know, why us? Why, you know, on the face of it, it's something I really feel like I want to support. But, you know, are there other agencies that should be supporting this as well? Sort of uh, the CSP have already mentioned, you know, the police um, uh, and, wh and whether or not um, other agencies are going to be involved. But I, don't get me wrong, I, I, you know, I, I, I like the idea of this. I think if we can get social workers involved and get people, maybe steer people from the wrong path onto a better one, then that's a good thing to do. Can I, I think we focus, we have focused quite a bit on Orchard Park, whereas in fact, we're really being asked if we will accept the first six um, applications and, and perhaps my question is why did they choose unique feet foot feet um, which got 73 instead of blue smile or or Cambridge joint play yeah. my my question really is about if you took out unique feet and put in uh, blue smile you could include one of the others that's about four thousand pounds and so have seven yeah. projects instead of six and and i just would like to hear what officers feel about that sort of idea that's, that's, that's sorry to cut across you there leslie if you're going to say something that's exactly what i was going to say you don't actually you're not being asked to just or, or recommended to make a decision based on those first six alone. We've just drawn the line there so that you can see how far the funding goes based on our scoring. Mm. Um, if you want to, you can do exactly that and go through each one and say, well, we do want to fund this for this reason and we don't want to fund this. And as long as you can give reasons, then we can explain why those applications haven't been successful. And that's absolutely fine. Or we can do what Leslie has said and take some elements of each one out if they're, if they're more suited to something like the community chest. Um, so it's absolutely fine to do, to do either. Maybe I need to ask John, 
whether he would be happy for us to possibly take out capital funding uh, and put it into a, a different uh, grant package. Um, I mean, that's a, that's a possibility. That that um, is something that we could we could look at um, and say use some of the um, community chess money um, to to pick up on the, on the capital cost of some of these schemes um, because they would still uh, meet the criteria for the community chess fund. Um, mm. So that to my mind is you know is is a way round of trying to actually give more of these schemes um you know an opportunity to um, um at least have the support uh, revenue support to enable their their project to go ahead while we pick up the cost of the capital uh, mm -hmm. involved um on on that uh, on that point of actually um unique feet um, I, I was going to come to unique feet because um, I noticed in the report there was a question mark over its sustainability in that once, um, you know, whether or not they would be able to continue um, once our funding had run out. Um, and yet I found that it, it, the officers have scored it higher than, say, Blue Smile and, um, and the Cambridge Joint Play. Um, and again, I wonder why the officers did score, did did consider unique feet, which which had got you know the same scores as those others, um, put that in rather than uh, not one not one of the others. But um, may, maybe you know maybe a way forward is to um, deal with the capital costs of these schemes under community chest. Um, and take take the money for that for, for, from the community chest, and and how that would then affect, um, you know, the the number of number of schemes that we would be able to support. How how many schemes would we then be able to support? Well, um, it doesn't actually alter things greatly because uh, creative the creative cooking application, uh, which was five thousand seven hundred and twenty two. Only £475 of that was for capital funding for um, items right. of equipment. And then the Histon and Impington, um, which was a total application of 4190 only £150 could um, be apportioned as, as capital funding. Um, so that didn't really, it's only kind of removed about what, uh five six hundred and twenty five pounds from the pot i think what if we, if we were to go back to whether we can partially fund some of these schemes because if we look at something like let's go back to unique feet for for example um i think it scored well on social disadvantage because you know it, it directly helped a group of marginal people but they were looking for kind of seed funding, and and they um, a lot of it, a lot of their funding was going towards um, uh, community outings. So if we were to fund less, it just means that they would have fewer outings. So you, their their project could still proceed, but not you know at the full uh, with with the full amount of, of activities that they had planned. Um, and, and the same goes for some of the other applications. Hmm. Could I, uh, uh, Chair, could I just ask, please, because that, um, that's quite a, a, a general point there. So um, Unique Feet talks not just about the outings, but uh, the, the grant would pay for group coordinator. Now, what we don't have here is any breakdown, and it's a very round sum of money, just as the Orchard Park is a very round sum of money. Um, and, and I think that really quite like us to look at the possibility of, as Peter was saying earlier on, to spread this pot a bit more widely. Um, and I just wondered why those were very round sums of money when the others are very um, exact sums of money and whether we could do some spreading around. 
Um, because if you look at the scoring, um, you know, we've got two, uh, two applications at 73 and two at 72. So I think we ought to look at those more closely and see if we can um, give funds to more groups. Um, let, can we, if we can have a look at unique feet um, at their application. Um. Uh, just a moment. It does seem to me that we're actually trying to make decisions on too many variables um, with inadequate information available to us on which to make that decision, mm -hmm. if you see what I mean. We home in on one or another, um, and, and that doesn't tell us about the other um, 10 that there are behind it. Is there a way forward um, in, in how urgent is this decision, perhaps, is what I would like to know. Sorry, Bill. Yeah, I was going to suggest, actually, Chair, that, you know, what we might do is to go down and look at the, uh, the, each of the projects and say, uh, in principle, that they, they look like the kind of thing we should be supporting. And then perhaps look at, well, first of all, we can look at the, the capital, you know, shifting the capital um, uh, out of it and, and into the community chest. Although, Leslie, I take, take what Leslie said, that um, it might not make a huge amount of difference. But, um, yeah, that might be the way forward. And then, you know, I'm, I'm willing to accept the officer's judgment, the officer's scores. I'm f very happy to just accept those. And then to go down, go down the list. If we say you know, yay or nay to all of these projects, um, and uh, you know maybe we can ask for officers to go away and look to see if there's a way of spreading the funding more, uh, to, you know, put, putting the, allowing other projects to gain something from this. Would that would that seem would that seem a really reasonable thing to do? Uh, I certainly would like to spread the projects as far as we possibly can. I, I saw you nodding, John. Are you saying this is not an urgent, urgent decision? Or um, Well, I, to be honest with you, I, I spoke to Joseph about the having this meeting at all, actually, given the current circumstances. And I did say to Joseph that I couldn't see why we couldn't have um, delayed, um, postponed this meeting to, to January. Um, but I understand that there was uh, some pressure to go ahead with it. Um, but I, I have to say, from what I've heard so far, and from what members are saying, I think maybe we need to have a bit more, you need to have a bit more information in front of you to enable you to, to, to uh, be able to, you know, fully um, um, look at these schemes and, and to give a view on them. Um, I see, I think Catherine, you were probably first, and then Peter, and then Aaron. Okay, thank you. Um, in terms of the timescales, there are published timescales that we've tried to work to so that so the grant recipients, whoever gets those grants, has them in time for us to be able to run enough months of their project and then be able to feed back to us how they have manage those projects and what the outcomes have been because if you remember the original purpose of this was to run this as a pilot with the potential of including some kind of children young people strand within the service support grants when they're relaunched in their next three-year phase so we wanted to have as many months um, under our belt in terms of understanding how those projects had gone before we reviewed it which will have to happen in the summer because we need to do that in time for the budget requirements to start budget setting in September. So, yes, the abs one month possibly wouldn't have made much difference, but in terms of trying to get the grants out to everybody, we did want to try to do that before Christmas so that they could start work and start recruitment if they've got recruitment to start in January. Um, I appreciate you've probably not got every single bit of detail from the applications there, but each one is sometimes five or six pages long. So we did just try to summarize them for you so that you weren't going through um, reams and reams of paper. 
Um, so apologies if you don't feel you've got what you need to be able to make those decisions, but they, they're really quite lengthy in some cases. Um, if you'd like, we can go through each individual one, as, as, as Bill has said, and just um, look at what's capital, what's not, what can be diverted, what can't. Look at whether there is, for example, like with Orchard Park, two stages that we could perhaps fund the first and not the second, and therefore hold over some money for another um, another organisation. We could just go through and answer any questions you've got about each one with the applications in front of us. I wasn't really suggesting we did it today, though. Um, I thought what what we could do is, based on the information we have, we can sort of say, in principle, we like the, you know, if there, there, there may, I don't think there are, but if there are any here that we say, look, we, we just don't want to support this, uh, we, you know, we know where we are. We could go through it and agree in principle that we, we are supportive of these, and then you can go away, as off, the officers can go away and just go through a little bit of the detail and see if we can make the pot spread a little bit further. That, that's, the, my, that's my point. Rather than sitting in here for a couple of hours and trying to go through lots and lots of detail. I don't Apolo apologies. I, th I thought that is what we would do today because that's what we've done with the zero carbon communities and those sorts of things. We've gone through each one. I think we're probably yes. 45 minutes in now, so it might not work. But that, yeah, OK, that's fine. Peter. Uh, thanks, Chair. So, a couple, uh, trying to pick up on the threads and a couple of suggestions to move this forward. For, first of all, uh, uh, I don't particularly want to make a decision right here and now, and that's just because there's a little bit of extra information, but, but just to uh, reassure officers, not lots and lots of information. First of all, as a guiding principle, I'd like to be able to say that we could fund two-thirds of the projects that have been submitted. As, as a sort of guideline, because at the moment we have just under just under half. The only way we can do that clearly is we reallocate some of the monetary amounts. So as I said in the start, um, I don't want to question the officer scores at all. I'm sure they've done an excellent job on that. that I have no problem with that. So if we look at the capital, if we look how much money that would potentially free up, um, and then the only other thing I would like um, between now and a discussion in January is um, how many how many individuals, how many children do we think realistically, you know, this would this would reach? Um, and you know, if Project A reaches a uh, hundred a hundred kids, and Project B, you know, reaches twenty, I, I think we I wouldn't say that we just turn down the the project that reaches twenty because. You know that would, uh, if, if it's very valuable for those 20, that's still a good project. But just give us some sense in that. That's the only uh, other thing I'd like to see. And then I think we're ready to make a final decision in in January. Aaron. Uh, thanks, Chair. It was just to resolve the bit of confusion around any pressure in January. Um, so previously, we had a planning inquiry booked into the chamber uh, for the back end of January, the beginning of February. Uh, but with the uh, introduction of Plan B, that has actually been moved online. So uh, the January Grants Committee can go ahead as sort of originally scheduled. So there is no pressure as far as that's concerned. Right. So, or, or is there an option that we just present it as you would community chest and um, get Go through. members make the decision from the application forms if you feel that there's not enough information? Um, we've actually included uh, in our scoring, we've included that sort of value for money because we've looked for how many children, how many families how many community members, whether it will result in, you know, jobs and training for people, that's come under our value for money um, assessment. So I um, appreciate you want to see all of that detail, but that, that was in our thinking at that point. Yeah. Claire. Yes, I, I really would like us to see, uh, I'm repeating myself, but I would like us to be able to fund more of the applications that we got in front of us. And actually, if you look at the scores, there isn't a great deal of difference between many of them. Um, and just coming back to, again, what I said earlier, the two that are eight, the very round figures of 8,000. Um, I just would like to know why they're very round. Um, and if possible, if by giving those two a little less, we had more money to spread around, I'd be happier with that. 
I think if I understand us all, and please correct me if you think I'm overstating, it does seem that we are trying to deal with far too many variables at this moment, but the overriding urge is that we should fund more projects rather than less, rather than the, the few that have been identified. And we would really like if um, the officers could look at the projects and make proposals on how we could increase the number of projects that we fund um, by reducing um, perhaps the capital funding, but also perhaps reducing, as you suggested, with Orchard Park, and there may be others that are two stages or um, could be reduced in size so that we could at least touch more communities with this very, very generous fund that's been found and, and, and see if we could help more, more areas to get started, to kickstart something and make it uh, an event for a larger number of communities. How, uh, Bill? Yeah, I think also I think it'd be quite good to have an idea as to whether something like uh, the Orchard Park thing, you know, if, if we give them £7,999, would, would that mean that the whole thing folds up, can't, can't happen? Or is there a lesser sum? You know, uh, uh, you know it's not, I, I doubt whether any of these would, would not go ahead if we were to, uh, uh, you know, offer a lower sum, a slightly lower sum. That's my point. You know, it's none of them are going to, they're not going to turn around and say, well, if you don't give us the full amount, we ain't doing anything. I doubt, doubt that's the answer. And I'd, I'd quite like to in, uh, investigate that a little bit as well, really. Mm. Just so that and we can spread the, spread the money a bit wider. Mm. Just to add, I mean, so for instance, Blue Smile, that's therapist fees. So, you know, uh, if we were to fund them less than they've asked for, then they wouldn't, there wouldn't be as many, uh, I guess they just wouldn't be able to reach as many children. Uh, the Cambridge Fire and Rescue, that's the cost of the course. You know, children attend a course. I think that that's a fixed fee. Um, I don't think that we could reduce the cost of that one. Cambridge Jazz, um, that's musician fees, venue fees, instrument rental fees. They said they could accept less, but this would reduce the amount of out outreach that they had planned. Um, Cambridge Joint uh, Play, that was the cost to cover outings, transport and staffing fees. So that was two trips per month. So we could fund them less than that they've requested. Creative cooking, that was mostly revenue. Uh, so again, staffing costs. Uh, with a small amount of capital funding. Histon and Impington, again, that was the cost of a therapist, a self-employed therapist to support young people at Histon and Impington Village College. Um, again, if we, if, if we gave them less, I'm sure that, that it could still proceed. Uh, they just wouldn't be able to train as many young people. The Kite Trust, that was the, the cost to, to cover youth worker salary. So again, it would just reduce the reach. Um, the Let's Cook project, that was the um, that's session worker fees again. Um, we've talked about Orchard Park, Orwell Eco Youth, that was youth worker fees. Um, the Folk I've called it something else, but it was um, a delegation of Peruvian children coming over. That was the cost of airline tickets, but that was scored our lowest because it didn't really meet our objectives anyway. Um, Romsey Mill, that's salary, travel, revenue and activity costs. Sawston is a youth worker. Um, again, I spoke to them. They said the project could proceed without total funding, just fewer sessions provided and unique feat is group coordinator plus activities. So it looks like the funding could go ahead again, but just reduced uh, amount of activities if we were to give them less. 
so the, I think there is there there is an option to to reduce the fees. It's just I think understanding from each of these organisations what the impact would be and is there a minimum amount that we could give them that would enable their their projects to still proceed. What what I don't I think what I wouldn't want to do is give them a reduced amount of which they couldn't achieve very much at all. So it's I, I guess it's understanding what a workable budget would be. I suppose my my feeling and, and possibly John's is that there's far too many nice round numbers mm. like seven thousand, six thousand five hundred, five thousand, four thousand, and nobody I I don't feel has broken down exactly what it is going to cost them. Sorry, John. And they have. Oh, sorry. Sorry, yeah, John. Yeah. I'm, 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 have, sure, I'm, I'm sure they have. And, and um, like all these things, you know, you tend to round up um, on these various different um, elements. But what, what I, I came back, I come back to, you know, the actual officer's comments. And I do uh, take on board what Bill said about, um, and, and Peter, about not querying the scores. But take Cambridge Fire and Rescue, for example. The officer's actually saying that it, it, you've, the, the panel felt that the scheme would be better funded from the Cambridge Safety Partnership. Now, I would have thought, therefore, the score would have been zero. Because, because, because your, your view is that actually this isn't the, where our fund is not the place they should be getting money from. But that um, wasn't one of the criteria for the scoring as to whether or not it was it was eligible. Right. Therefore, we scored it on the five but, headings that you can okay, see in the appendix. Okay, Kerry. Okay. Well, I, okay, I agree. With, I, I accept that. But you know, you're saying here actually, should we really be giving them any money? Mm. And there are other, and I say the yeah. other one, the uh, unique foot, where you question their sustainability. So there are a couple in here actually that you could say, and we're not going to support these. Yeah. Because the officers have suggested that although they meet our criteria, they, they don't feel that we ought to be funding them. So, again, you know, it's more than just, you know, salami slicing <laughs> what we have. It's actually going in and looking at what the officers have actually said. And perhaps the officers themselves, apart from the scoring, perhaps what you need to present to the committee is actually your view on, on you know, what level of funding we should give each of these organisations. And so, for example, the Cambridge Fire and Rescue, although it scored really well, your view would be that we shouldn't be funding them. OK, that will, well, that's noted then. We didn't know whether you, we didn't think we should bring you that, a recommendation that was that detailed. We had anticipated going through each one, one by one, and then at the end going back and saying, OK, on basis of what we've discussed, We'll give this one this much no, and, and this and one I, this much. And I agree with you, Catherine. I didn't either, but sitting here listening to the members yeah. of the committee, I think that's pretty, that would, you know, it, it's obviously they don't have sufficient information. So uh, is that the, the way forward for us? Is everybody happy that we should ask the officers to look at each one and provide us with... Um, information which will allow us to make judgments about whether we can increase the number of recipients of this fund. Yes, I'd, 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 I'd like to see it done that way. But I don't want to hold it up too long. No, I hope we, I hope we can. We, hope we, can we want it to be as, as quick soon as we, as we can. can. Yeah. Um, are you happy? No, I'm, I don't think you are, but will you accept, Catherine, that the um, meeting at the end of January will re-look at this and move forward quickly from there? We, we, will, we will now need to bring it back, yes, in January, and um, perhaps we can have a chat with some of you afterwards about what exactly, what in, information other than the entire application form mm. you know what what would help you make that decision um 
any better than sort of us describing to you what's here with it, what's within it, and then going through each one. Because mm. I'm just worried we'll be in the same position. So I just really want to make sure we got it right for you next time. Mm. I, I think members just need a bit more guidance, to be honest. Yeah. On each one. Thank you. Can Sorry we about that. Then move on to the. I'm sure. Can I? Um, can I duck out here? I have a meeting with Ermine Street that started at three o'clock, and oh, um, right, yeah. uh, <laughs> and that be uh, that. If I can be excused, thank you very much. Anyway, um, Merry Christmas, everyone. If I don't see you um, next week, Merry and um, see you in the new year. Bye. Merry Christmas. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Uh, right, item six: service support grants to the voluntary sector. Six month update report. Yep. So um, this is so as part of the contractual agreement that we have with our service support grant recipients, those that are in receipt of fifteen thousand pounds or more are required to provide a, a kind of mid year performance update. Um, with the exception of CCVS, who only uh, who are in receipt of ten thousand uh, pounds, but um, because of the nature of the work that they do, um, they provide us with a, a, a mid-year report. And really, this is just a, a, so an update. Um, uh, I, just to uh, for some background information, uh, I am in uh, regular contact with them. Um, uh, so I'm, I'm very happy with the performance uh, to date, um, in spite of the kind of pressures that uh, the economic uh, environment is um, impacting on the voluntary sector. Mm. Yes, I, I, I think it is uh, very difficult to find volunteers at the moment, I understand, actually to recruit them. Are there any questions about um, item six? Bill? Uh, well, I... I was going to propose that we, I think it's a good report, and uh, I would be happy to accept this report as it is. Uh, I mean, Leslie and Catherine uh, mm. are keeping a watching brief, and I'm, I'm happy to go with that. Claire? Yeah, I do have a question about Care Network, and this is related to county funding for Care Network. Um, so we, we put in funding for community transport, um, what, where, where does that, how does that match with the county funding? That actually, Councillor Claire Daunton, I, um, I'm not, uh, well, hopefully Catherine can. I haven't that. left yet, so I might be able to answer. Um, so we give a number of organisations funding to, towards their community transport services. And in some cases, the county council also funds those organisations. Yeah. Um, and the funding to Care Network is really to provide sort of a, an infrastructure support function and training in sort of heavy lifting and health and safety and those sorts of things. They're a kind of a central, a central source of training and, and support for those organisations that are delivering community transport and other good neighbour schemes. OK, so we fund the transport and county funds the rest. Is that it? Uh, we're funding a contribution towards the cost of care networks supporting those community transport organisations, but some of them, and I don't think I could list them off the top of my head now, but some of them also receive funding direct from the county to the, the service itself. Yes, I mean, I've come across care network in, in a county committee, so I just wanted to check up on that. And on the community transport, um, we've talked about this before, haven't we? We've talked about the fact that it's quite patchy and that depends on the volunteers and has that been as Sue was saying in respect of other things has it been badly impacted by volunteers recently my understanding is that the the volunteers are picking up again um, what that I think what they've had to do is adapt to their services so Prior to COVID, they uh, were, weren't too prescriptive about uh, where they could um, or, or for what purpose their, their car teams could be used. Um, but as a result of COVID, I think 
many of them are just focusing on medical uh, trips alone. Yeah. Um, so if it's a GP appointment or a hospital appointment and not so many social um, appointments. Yeah. Um, but again, that's on a, a um, it, it's very, it's, it, it's, that's not repeated across the district, but it, it is really on a uh, location by location uh, basis, depending on the popularity of the scheme and the number of volunteers they have. But my understanding was at the beginning of COVID, they lost a lot of their older because the, the kind of demographic of their volunteer tend to be over 60. They tend to be retired. Um, and so they lost a lot of those volunteers who were themselves having to um, isolate. Um, and as a result of that, they've been able to recruit younger, a kind of younger network of people. Um, so I, my understanding is it is picking up again. So it's not at the levels that it was pre-COVID, but it is better than it was. Okay, thanks. That's helpful. Thank you. Any other comments on the report? Uh, uh, Peter? Uh, yeah, just briefly from me, just to um, say thanks again to uh, Citizens Advice. Um, you know, with the changes in universal credit, you can see from the issues list that they've had a lot of questions and a lot of things to deal with. Um, so well done to them. I'll pass that on. Thank you. Right, so we're all happy. Oh, sorry, Claire, I couldn't see you. I've just got one other question. Um, and the Counties Innovate and Cultivate Fund, do we... Um, push things in their direction yes, yes we do good so yes i know it's open again isn't it the the, the latest round of funding is now open yes. and we do we 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 work very closely in signposting um all applicants to to that scheme okay i think the closing date is the first of february so i was just thinking about that in relation to some of the applications that came in for the fund that we've just been talking about yeah Okay, thank you. Okay. All happy. Thank you. Uh, I think that uh, is nearly the... Uh, we've just come to the date of the next meeting, which is the 28th of January. 10 o'clock. Presumably here, but who knows. Yep. Right. Fine. Thank you. Um, thank, thank you, you. everybody. I'm sorry uh, we didn't come to a conclusion because I think it, it's given a, officers additional work, but it did seem there were just too many variables. And, and the, as you say, the scoring was such that it was very difficult to judge between them. So I'll, apologies. I'll notify, no, I, I'll send out a quick email to all the applicants this afternoon just to let them know that um, decisions have been deferred for a month just because of the complexity. Um, yeah.